News 12 New Jersey's Chris Keating is at the Woodbridge Animal Shelter with more. Chris? Roxanne, behind the locked door of this trailer you see right here, there are six dogs in here. They're all in here because they are sick and they need to be quarantined from the rest of the population here at the shelter. Now, we are told they were taken from a store not far from here called Fancy Pups. And according to the director of the health department here in Woodbridge, he says these dogs are part of the worst case he's ever seen in town. Six dogs were carried out of the Woodbridge Animal Shelter one after another and placed in quarantine where they'll be treated. The animals we have right here have Giardia, um, some have Coccidia, and some have kennel cough. Dennis Green with the Woodbridge Health Department says their illness is related to unsanitary conditions. Animal Control took all of them from the fancy pup store. I've inspected uh, animal pet shops for 30 years. Um, this is probably the worst. They used a court order to shut it down following inspections that showed animals were in direct contact with excrement. Animals were not provided with water and they were improper examination records. But is this all true? We tracked down Fancy Pups owner Rocco Gerudo, who said he didn't want to run from any questions about his dogs. The dogs seemed fit to me. So we did a fecal sample on all the dogs in the store and I think six or seven of them came up with Giardia, which is a parasite. Uh, and we treated the dogs for that. He was arrested Sunday after animal control claims he was selling three dogs from his car dealership. Even though Fancy Pups, just a few doors down, was shut down. He showed us the cages, telling us those three dogs were his. The two shepherds I owned. Okay. And the third dog belonged to Paul, and I was training the dog. So you tell me those are not for, not for sale? No. Gerudo says he's been training dogs for 40 years and had the Fancy Pup shop for 12 years. But now he says he wants out. He no longer wants the hassle. We complied with everything. Uh, I just, let's be honest, they just don't like puppy stores. I mean, they don't want puppy stores. Rocco Garuto told me he believes he's not being treated fairly here, and he hopes once he gets in front of a judge, he can have this all ironed out. However, he's facing some very serious animal cruelty charges, which, if found guilty, could land him in jail. Finally, as for the dogs put in this trailer today, well, once they're healthy, they will be put up for adoption. In Woodbridge, Chris Keating, News 12, New Jersey. And Vanessa, it is safe to say that Cuban Americans make up the identity of Union City. There are former political prisoners of the Castro regime living here. Adults who, as children, were shipped out of their country for their own safety. But even though Fidel Castro has died, they are not at all optimistic that change is coming to their homeland. The Cuban national anthem was sung as the flag was raised above Union City. The faces looking on were of those who fled Castro's communism in the 50s and 60s, including Eno Martel, a former political prisoner. La vida se igual. The life in Cuba is going to remain the same. He is doubtful because Raul Castro remains in power and has no plans to step down until 2018. No es fácil, no es fácil. He has four generations of people, Raul, around him. So it's going to be really hard to change that system. Raul Castro has worked with President Obama to ease travel restrictions. Flights are now leaving from Newark to Havana. Families can send back more money to loved ones, and he has allowed for more businesses to open, including privately owned restaurants known as Paladars. But some say it's not enough. This is no time to celebrate. There will be a democracy when the Cubans truly elect who they want, not anyone else, who they want to run that country. Some refuse to visit Cuba until it's free. Out of respect for all those that have suffered, like the political prisoners, the separations of family, tú eres Cuba. You are Cuba was that man's message, along with others written on signs, reminding that Cubans can't even speak freely for fear of being jailed by the Castro regime. Others believe it'll be up to the people of Cuba and perhaps with the assistance of the U.S., before the Cuban people are really free of communism. Mm. Those on hand for the ceremony today in Union City say they do not want to see an easing of re restrictions between these two countries, not at least until the Cuban people have more rights and free elections. And finally, as for Eno Martel, the former political prisoner we spoke with, he says someday he'd certainly like to return home. In Union City, Chris Keating, News 12, New Jersey. And Karen, members of St. Mary's Coptic Church in East Brunswick have been personally touched by these attacks. Some have lost relatives, others have lost friends. But they explain to us, Muslim extremists have targeted the Coptics in Egypt so often now that they've come to accept these terror attacks. 
The attack was during a Coptic prayer service similar to this one taking place inside St. Mary's in East Brunswick this Holy Week, only in Egypt. I can't say it's a disbelief because I, I feel that, again, it, it happens so often. <laughs> In Tanta, Egypt, inside St. George Cathedral, as the choir was singing, the bomb went off. The recording goes dark and then screams. 27 people died, 78 injured. My father and mother got, uh, were married in that church. Andrew Abdu grew up going to St. George Cathedral. His uncle is a priest there, and he's friendly with the twin brothers who are leading the choir, Magdi Salima and Suleiman Salima. One uh, passed, and uh, one is undergoing surgery to my... Uh to my understanding. The other attack was at St. Mark's in Alexandria. Surveillance video shows the suicide bomber attempting to get through a metal detector before the bomb blows. Church leaders say the man was targeting Coptic Pope Tawadros, who had left minutes earlier. They have so much hate toward the church. I think maybe lately because they feel that the church supported the government. Father Mark Hanna has little explanation for the continued attacks on Coptics in Egypt, but they have been persecuted more and more since the ouster of President Hosni Mubarak. Meanwhile, services for the Holy Week continued here, but with a much more somber tone. These are forgiving people. We try our best to always um, love love the person, hate the act. Hmm. Um, and, and I think that that's one thing that we can always strive for. Now, as for the services tonight, the members of St. Mary's were thinking about unity tonight and certainly praying for those who are lost. Chris Keating, News 12, New Jersey. Anything else? That's it. Famosa's Bakery along Route 35 is open again. Well, in a sense, owner Tim Famosa has got a sign in the window with posted hours and a tent with tables in the parking lot. We've been serving the community for 38 years. And, uh, you know, we wanted to at least have something out here, you know, at least bread and rolls. Bread and rolls is all the regulars seem to need. One day we saw the, the uh, tent out here and everybody was like, Formosas is back. It keeps the name alive, yes, exactly. keeps him committed. If you're wondering why the tent, let's give you a look inside the bakery. Inside Formosa Bakery right now, I should be smelling donuts, fresh bread and baked goods coming from these ovens. Instead. There's a strong smell of mold in here. On this oven, this line you see right here, that's the water line left behind from Sandy. This oven is shot, it needs to be tossed. And all of this back here, in their showroom where the deli counter was, and their showcases with all those baked goods, this all needs to be thrown out and replaced. But to do so, the family needs money. It's, it's very depressing to, to know that we were unable to, to be open uh, this summer. Famosa didn't have flood insurance when Sandy came through, so he's waiting to hear if he'll get grant money from the SBA or the state. He needs about $400,000 with the hope of opening next summer. For now, his brother is baking the rolls and breads in an industrial park in Manchester and driving them over. They say bread is life. At Famosa's, that's very much the truth. This bread is bringing in some much needed dough. Are you guys surviving? Barely, <laughs> but we're surviving. The reality is, if the state aid doesn't come through, there's a strong chance Famosas will have to close down for good. In Orley Beach, Chris Keating, News 12, New Jersey. Vanessa, good evening. Well, they chose Walmart to protest because like the thousands of shoppers rolling into this store today, they're looking for the most bang for their buck. But these protesters, they're not looking for deals. Rather, they're looking for exposure in their fight to get people paid a living wage. Their bright red signs read, raise the minimum wage, or workers deserve 15. Both in full view of the masses of people pouring into Walmart, many with sympathetic hunks of approval. Raise the minimum wage! We think that Walmart has made a lot of their money by paying people poverty wages. So these people rely on food stamps and other social services to get by in life. With 1.5 million employees, Walmart is America's largest employer. It has made some concessions. In 2016, it raised wages to $10 an hour for associates. But with 34 hours per week to be called full time, that's only $18,000 per year. It's not enough to survive on. Uh, you can't make the rent. You can't feed yourself. Deborah Lamego works for a big retailer. I make $9.99 an hour. Melissa Tomlinson is a teacher who has seen the effects on her students. We see kids that come to school hungry. They don't have the right clothes. They don't have the warm coats they need for the winter. And they can't learn until those basic needs are met. The New Jersey legislature nearly passed a $15 minimum wage, but it was vetoed by Governor Chris Christie in June. We want it on the ballot the way 
you said it was going to be on the ballot. These protesters are upset that Democrats in Trenton have yet to get it on the 2017 ballot. They say Democrats are taking credit for raising wages across the country, but workers here say they aren't seeing it. And that's what these rallyers want to see next, a chance for the public as a whole here in New Jersey to vote on minimum wage. Now, there are several cities across the country who have already approved $15, cities like Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Pittsburgh. Across the Hudson in New York, it's been approved. However, it's being phased in over there. In Carney tonight, Chris Keating, News 12, New Jersey. An estimated 400 people packed inside Union City City Hall to get their hands on one of these brand new municipal identification cards. Cards which members of the immigrant population here in town, they believe would be their first line of defense against possible deportation. The ID cards weren't available until 4, but people started lining up outside the city clerk's office two hours early. Once inside, they showed virtually any form of ID, filled out an application, and posed for a photo, which was then transferred onto one of those cards. If they do get stopped by either police officers or anyone else, they can say, hey, I'm part of this town, okay. and I'm here, you know, working, making a difference. Onixa Medina, originally from Chile, was in line with her parents. All three, like so many others, are working towards citizenship. She says the card also gives them a feeling of worth. The numbers of those wanting a card far exceeded expectations from Union City officials. I was thinking it's going to show up maybe 30, 50 people, but it's hundreds of people upside, you get a big surprise. There were people here from all over, Peru, Ecuador, Venezuela, and more. No surprise in a city that's 95% immigrant. The city our environment, the atmosphere we're in today, it's sad that we're pitting people against each other in this country. We should be uniting the country. Mayor Brian Stack helped put this all together in direct response to President Trump's aggressive take on the undocumented. But even more showed up this evening for a seminar for immigrants titled Know Your Rights. Mayor Stack addressed the crowd saying they shouldn't feel bad about what's going on, assuring them they belong. They contribute so much to the local economy and they do jobs that most Americans wouldn't do. Mayor Brian Stack says, in fact, that the city will not be retaining any of the personal information on those cards. Union City will resume handing out these new ID cards at 9 a.m. In Union City, Chris Keating, News 12, New Jersey. We are in Point Pleasant here where the snow is falling and the surf is incredible behind us. And Governor Christie is kind enough to join us at this time. First of all, I have to ask you this view out here. The beach is being eaten up. You've seen this before. Your thoughts on just the idea of coastal flooding and erosion along this area of Monmouth and Ocean County? Well, I don't think we're going to worry too much about coastal flooding in this storm. We may have a little bit of flooding in the streets, but I don't think significant ones and certainly none that will mandate an evacuation or any real property damage. Uh, but I am worried about about beach erosion and this is at the epicenter of our fight to build the dune system. You guys have covered it very closely. Um, Point Pleasant Beach and Bayhead, 121 homeowners who won't give permission to build the dune system. If you go down the beach here to Ortley Beach, they're getting pounded down in Ortley Beach because the people here refuse to give permission to build a dune system until it can be built all down the beach. You can't start part of it. And so it's wrong. The people here are wrong and they should be uh, signing those easements and let us get this project done so we don't have to worry about beach erosion like this again. We have seen some flooding, not in this area, but down in Atlanta County. Concerns down there? Have you been in touch with officials in those areas? We have. Um, our DEP commissioner, uh, Environmental Protection Commissioner Bob Martin, has been in touch with the mayors in Avalon, Stone Harbor, um, and Sea Isle City, where there's the most significant flooding. And there's a few feet of water in the streets there, but no need for evacuations, according to them at this point. We've offered them assistance. They're taking us up on it, along with their county office of emergency management. So for the folks down there, um, we think they're going to be doing okay, and I think it'll only get better, not worse. Okay, but let's move on to the roads now. Everybody off the roads, unless you have to be outside. What have you seen? You've been on the roads. How do they look as far as travelability and as far as people being out there, yes or no? Well, listen, they shouldn't be out there tonight under any circumstances. Stay home unless it is an absolute emergency. Stay home. Now, I have to tell you, the Garden State Parkway was in very good shape when I drove down it today. The DOT has done and the Turnpike Authority have done a great job on that. Um, I was on route, uh, Interstate 287. Uh, the visibility wasn't great then, only probably about a quarter of a mile, so people have to be very careful. Um, the plow drivers have to be careful on that, and it takes them a little longer to get it cleared. So I think we're making progress. I hope that we'll have most of the roads cleared by tomorrow when the snow stops, and that we'll be ready for uh, the commute on Monday morning. The last area is power outages. We haven't seen too many to this point, but remember, during Sandy, this was an issue. Some of the utilities were widely criticized for the response. 
Are they getting the job this time? Are you confident that they prepared for a storm like this one? They're much better than they were three years ago. Let's start there. And so far, so good. We had a, up to 95,000 outages, and now we just put another 45,000 people back online. So we're down to about 50,000 net outages, 35,000 down first far south, Atlantic City Electric, in that area, about 15,000 in JCP&L and a, a scattered hundred outages in the PSE and G area in the northern part of the state. Now, the storm's still moving north, so we may have some more power losses in the PSE and G area up north later tonight. So for folks who lose your power, really important, leave your home and either shelter with friends and family who have power or go to a county shelter. They're all over. You can call law enforcement. They'll help get you there. But we don't want you staying in the house. The weather's too cold. We don't want you staying in the cold house tonight. Final, any last concerns heading into the evening tonight for you? Listen, I want to keep an eye on the flooding, especially along the shore and the very southern parts of our shore to make sure that we don't need to do any evacuations down there, Atlantic City and south. And then it's the power outages always because when these storms are in the winter, it is very, very dangerous, especially for the elderly and the infirmed who have difficulty getting around. We want them to be able to be warm and safe tonight. So if they have any problems at all, they lose their power, Call law enforcement, get them to come get you, and they'll get you to a warm place to get something good to eat and to keep you warm tonight. On a lighter note, you are uh, have much less clothing on than me today. No <laughs> hat on. <laughs> now I feel pretty good, you know. I've, I've been out in the weather all day today, so maybe my body's just adjusting to it, or maybe I'll have a raging cold in, in a few days. I don't know, but I feel pretty good right now. Eric, good evening. We're talking about $100,000 worth of jewelry stolen from Ruby's Jewelers here on Smith Street in Perth Amboy, perhaps Perth Amboy's busiest street in the city. Now, we spoke with the owner, and Sam Hamad told us, in fact, he never expects to actually get this merchandise back, but he's hoping, he's hoping with your help, perhaps, at the very least, they will catch these two men you're about to see. In the heart of Perth Amboy's shopping district, Ruby's Jewelry was robbed at 4 Saturday morning. Surveillance cameras inside caught it all. Look to the left of your screen and you'll see a brick crashing through the glass doors and then two men running in. The first man has a beard, a knit hat and white shirt and looks like he's not sure what to do. The second suspect looks shorter, balding and starts grabbing for the wall. They grab whatever silver in that side, then they came this way. They pushed the showcases down. Watching the video with us, store owner Sam Hamadi says they ignore the two cases pushed over and go for a third carrying diamonds. Within minutes, the two men run out, and then we see police walk in with guns drawn. Diamond engagement rings, diamond pendant, diamond rings, diamond earrings, 300, 400 pieces. Easy. It's a very bad situation. We've been here for 24 years. And he's been robbed three times in that span. But this time, the way these thieves got inside has stunned Sam Hamadi. To get inside this jewelry store, the thieves first had to get past one of these metal doors. To do that, well, they came down here to the corner of the store on Smith Street and looked to the circuit box. And right here, they simply unscrewed it, four screws, pulled it off looked at the wires, clipped one of the wires, and then crossed another wire. And once they did that, the door went up. It never crossed my mind they were going to do this. And as he shuts the metal door on yet another day, he says he's been spending a lot of time outside eyeing everyone who passes by the store. Believe me, now I look in the street. You never know. You Maybe those guys in the morning passing by looking what, what they have done. Now, if you're wondering if this was some kind of inside job or insurance scam, Sam says absolutely not. In fact, he admitted to us he doesn't have any insurance on this merchandise, so this will take a long time to make up. He also says police have told me here in Port Amboy that, in fact, detectives will be by to the store on Tuesday to pick up a copy of the surveillance video you just watched. He's hoping police already know these faces. In Port Amboy tonight, Chris Keating, News 12, New Jersey. So here he is, this guy right here in the middle of the pack, that's Angelo Bomeo, the guy wearing nothing more but the pink bikini bottoms. Now, for finishing last in his fantasy league last year, his punishment was to walk along Route 9 in Tom's River wearing nothing more than that. Well, now he's getting a whole lot more of attention than he expected as this image and his story, they're both going worldwide. Terror, horror, I don't know how to explain it to you. It really was 10 minutes of terror for Angelo Bomeo as he disrobed to reveal nothing more than triple XL bikini bottoms and black sneakers. Eventually, he pulled on a wrestling mask as he carried around his sign. Palms were sweaty. My wife was, wasn't happy when I was doing it that, that morning. She just said, I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear about it. 
His punishment didn't come until Labor Day when his league drafts players. So he had six months to think about this day. He even lost weight before he had to pay the piper, going from 320 to 290 pounds. There were two reasons he had to make this bikini walk. One, so that the league remained competitive. Those rules were implemented so that it keeps it competitive, that people don't get lazy and start not setting up your lineup and stuff like that. The other reason, Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning, he got me negative, it was a game he got, I think, negative seven points. Had I not even started a quarterback that game, I played no quarterback, I wouldn't even be in this situation. <laughs> When not shaming himself, Bomeo actually runs two restaurants, including Three Bees Bar and Bistro in Lakehurst. And he's a proud dad and husband to wife Carrie and their three-year-old Leah. His league mates have been soaking all of this up. I think he handled like a champ, yeah. He did, a, he did a good job. It's almost like a new aspect to the league. Like, of course you want to win, but you also don't want to lose. So where is that bikini? Well, he had it handy in his car. Maybe it'll go up on his wall. He's now dropped out of all his other fantasy leagues to focus on this one. Otherwise, you can actually end up doing this again. I think it's no longer about winning anymore. I think it's not about losing. He really is a great guy. He is certainly not a loser, even though we say it there. Now, Bomeo is getting calls from all around the country, and his wife pointed out to him that even The Sun, a tabloid in the UK, has been using his photo, calling him the portly pizza man, which Bomeo, thankfully, is still getting a kick out. Chris Keating, News 12, New Jersey.